Well, my goodness, I think this is perfect. What a good sign. We all fit just exactly right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome home. We're going to open tonight's opening ceremony, open this opening ceremony with a word of prayer. So I ask that you join me either in the spirit of prayer or in quiet reflection. Dear God, we gather this evening as a group of people who come from many faiths and many different traditions. We may follow different teachings, all made known to us by sacred voices and scriptures throughout the ages. We may not even use the same word, if any word at all, when we speak your name. Nevertheless, we come together this evening to thank you for the blessing of being together in this special space to begin our school year together. As we have now left our families to come to Cardigan Mountain School, give us courage to reach out to one another, to create a new family, our Cardigan family, that we may love and support one another as you have taught us to do. As we enter the coming days, help each one of us do our best to be kind and to care for one another as we begin this exciting journey together. We dedicate the upcoming year with all its promise and potential to your glory, O oh God. Help us together create a community that is true to the vision of our founders and most of all, a community that honors you. Amen. Good evening, one and all, and welcome to my Cardigan family. My apologies at the outset, I can hear my voice is not what it usually is. I've been talking a lot, apparently, in the last couple of days. It is really, really wonderful to see all of you and to be together with all of you. Uh, as I was sitting, waiting uh, for the start of our program, I was doing a little math in my head, and I calculated that it was 37 years ago tonight when I sat in one of these pews as a brand new eighth grade student. And I can remember the sense of excitement, the same kind of sense of excitement I feel right now for a, for a new adventure and the start of a new year. But I have to admit, in 1978, I was also really scared. I was nervous, I was scared, I didn't know any of the boys here, and I was really having some second thoughts. I wasn't sure if this was the right, the right thing. Very quickly though, um, as has been the case for many, many years, very quickly, my Cardigan brothers surrounded me and supported me. My faculty, new faculty friends, or I should say teachers and coaches and dorm parents took good care of me. And I think that has been a hallmark of Cardigan Mountain School for a long time. We take, we take good care of one another. We're compassionate. We remember what it was like to be a new member of this community. And I want to say to all of our new members, the boys certainly, and to my colleagues, just a word uh, on the uh, concept of courage. It takes tremendous courage to decide to do something new like this. this. This, I assume, is unlike anything you've ever done before. And you had to have the kind of the courage and the conviction to say, yes, I want to have this kind of experience. And so I applaud you. If you're sitting here right now, you've done a lot and it, take, it has taken tremendous courage. And I suspect there are some among us who are feeling a bit anxious and maybe a little bit homesick. I want to assure you, we're gonna take good care of you. That's the kind of community we are and we have been for a long, long time. So with that, uh, again, I welcome all of you. We're gonna have a fantastic year this year and I wanna make sure that we take good care of one another. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. McCusker, faculty, and fellow Cardigan brothers. Welcome to Cardigan Mountain School. 
This school holds a special place in the hearts of all the boys who live here. I'm extremely excited to embark on another journey with old friends and new. On behalf of, on behalf of those returning, I want to say that we are proud and ready to share our home with all the new faces on campus. Cardigan is a magnificent place, and there are many special aspect, aspects to the Cardigan life. The friends you make play a big role in your life here on the point. The friends you make will eat, the friends you make you will keep forever, and that's pretty special. Your friends are in your class, on your team, in your dorm, and everywhere you go. No matter where you are, you, you have a friend at every corner to help you and make you laugh. Your experience at Cardigan will be in your memory forever. Your experience will affect how you remember and speak of Cardigan, and everyone's experience is different in its own way. Live your own life here, boys. Let your brothers around you be a part of the story, but don't let anyone else write it. You write your story. You determine how your life will be here. Make it special and enjoy any minute, every minute of it. Living on this campus is a privilege that, many not, that not many have, and we are extremely lucky to board here at Cardigan. As a boarder myself, the dorm life is very important here. You are going to make great friends in the dorm. Your dorm is where you can hang out and get away from all the schoolwork, but that doesn't mean you respect it. You respect your dorm parents, you respect your building, and you respect your dorm mates. You guys live together, and just like home, you will get in fights, but you will always make up, because just like home, you are living with your family. We are a family here at Cardigan. You will bond with your teachers, coaches, and advisors, just as you bond with, your, with the boys sitting next to you. Cardigan has a rich history, and one that we have to uphold. When people ask where you went to school, and you tell them Cardigan Mountain School, People are going to know what you are all about. And what we are all about is respect, honor, effort, kindness, honesty, understanding, and love. People know that Cardigan boys are the ones they want on their team and in their classroom. Be proud to be a Cardigan boy and embrace how lucky you are to be here. Some tips to my returning boys. Stay focused. You know what's expected, so don't slack off. Stay humble. You all had your accomplishments last year, but it's a new year. And work hard. We set the example because we have been here before, so give your best effort in everything you do here. And some tips to the new boys. Appreciate where you are and how lucky you are. You go to a school in a beautiful place. Take some time every day to look around at the trees and the hills and the sky. Be outgoing. The easiest way to make friends is to talk, and the easiest way to succeed is to participate. And enjoy the ride. Soon, soon enough the year will be over and you don't want to look back saying, I wish I had time to realize how much fun that school was. Buy into the Cardigan way and you will enjoy your life here. Thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Thanks for listening and welcome. Good night. Thank you, Austin. Words of wisdom. Well, good evening, everyone. I have the pleasure to introduce tonight's faculty speaker, Mr. Good. If you don't know Mr. Good yet, he's someone you like from the moment you meet him, as he puts you at ease with his warm laugh and the twinkle in his eye. Mr. Good has been an English teacher here for the past six years and has directed several plays. Now he's our school's theater arts teacher, and this role provides a new offering in the arts for Cardigan Boys. Before teaching drama at other schools and his eventual arrival here at Canaan, New Hampshire, Mr. Good trained to be an actor at the respected Ensemble Studio Theater in New York City, one of the city's leading theater companies. He claims he can't sing on key, but he can quote William Shakespeare on cue. A few interesting facts about Mr. Good. He played four years of varsity soccer at Dartmouth College. He was a bike messenger in New York City, one of the riskier occupations a person can have. And he's directed over 40 plays. We are lucky to have Mr. Good here with us at Cardigan. Please welcome Mr. Jeffrey Good. Wow, that was me? Thank you. There were some things, there were a few grains of truth in that. Um, <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Uh, when uh, Mr. Irwin asked if I wanted to speak tonight, I responded, sure, no problem. Uh, it'd be an honor. But inwardly, it sounded more like, ah! 
because it's really scary to speak in front of so many people. And what if I bomb? What would happen? So there, I said it. I admitted my feelings to you. So instead of focusing on failure tonight, I'm going to choose for my theme success. All right, that might help me get through this. Booker T. Washington once said, and if you don't know who Booker T. Washington is, you should Google him, uh, is an amazing man, born into slavery, and the things that he accomplished, and he did, and he achieved, are tremendous. Um, and he said that success is not, a measure, uh, uh, is not measured by the position one has reached in life, rather by the obstacles one overcomes while trying to succeed. So let me deconstruct that a little bit. He said, overcome trying to succeed, suggesting that it's not even really important that you do succeed in the goal that you're trying to achieve, but that you try. He also says that uh, it is not about uh, the position that one reaches in life. It's not about uh, the job you hold. It is not about the amount of money that you make, the size of your house, your status. That has nothing to do with success. It is about the obstacles, the struggle that you go through. And I know some of us out there today, coming back a new year, you might be having some struggles. I would say we're all having some struggles, some more so than others. That's your struggle. That's an obstacle, not to be ashamed of, but to embrace. So um, switching gears, there's a trail that goes from Georgia to Maine, 2,000 2, miles long, and it's called the Appalachian Trail. Some of you may have heard about it because it runs right through here. And it takes about five to seven months to complete walking. About one in four people who set out to make it complete the trip. Tonight is not about the one of the four who make it. It's about all the ones who try it. So switching gears into a little personal story here. 20 years ago, I worked at a different junior boarding school, like Cardigan, in Connecticut, where the Appalachian Trail crossed one of the uh, main roads. And I'd often joke to my wife and say that one day, we're going to step out our door, walk on down the road, hop on the trail, and hike all the way up to your parents' doorstep in Hanover, New Hampshire, which is just down the road. And well, the next thing I know, my joke turned into a reality. And we were setting off with a colleague from the kitchen staff on a journey with nothing but what we could carry on our backs, figuring it would take us a couple of weeks to complete. Not five minutes into the trip, we were laughing, chatting, skipping along, so excited for our new adventure that I leaped from one boulder to another and landed wrong. And I tumbled with my 50-pound backpack to the ground. My ankle rolled, and I winced when I tried to put weight on it. It really hurt. And we had a problem. Our journey seemed over before it even started. Well, I was going to try and go on, but I silently questioned if I was going to make it the whole trip or even the 12 miles to the first shelter. And that night, I limped into the campsite even more troubled. The blisters on my feet were killing me. And then, problems always come in threes, it started to rain for five days. The temperature dropped, my blisters popped, and my red, raw, moist skin rubbed against the inside of my boots every step up and down those green mountains of Vermont. 
The whole time, my thoughts were about the pain. I was acutely aware of the pain as it got worse and worse. And then something happened. The pain began to ease. The pain didn't go away. It just got a little duller. But it was enough to lift my spirits. I was getting better not worse. As my spirits rose, I became more aware of how the others were suffering. My wife became sick with a stomach bug. Our colleagues seemed discouraged and got awfully quiet and distant. Honestly, there was not much that I could do except listen, be positive, and try to keep up one step after the other. Okay, let's fast forward to the end here. Eventually, the sun did come out. And when we crossed that bridge into Hanover, New Hampshire, we were averaging 20 miles a day pain-free. Each of us had gone through a personal crisis and emerged with our skin together, our skin tougher, our threshold for pain and discomfort higher, and our empathy for each other greater. It was easily one of the greatest and most difficult times I've ever had. So what? That's the English teacher talking. Next week, new students, you're going to wake up at 4 a.m. and climb in the dark to the top of Cardigan Mountain to watch the sun rise, the rising symbolizing the start of your Cardigan career. So you might ask, if the sun rising is the symbol, why hike up the mountain? I mean, wouldn't it just be, why don't we just stroll down to the waterfront? I mean, wouldn't that be much easier? Exactly. The mountain is bigger obstacle. It takes more effort. It requires attention and risk. Ninth graders, in the spring, you will hike up in the evening and watch your sun set. The mountain, a reminder of the obstacles that shaped who you are and who you want to become. You will look back, not on what you achieved, but what you went through. So let us proceed this year, not focused solely on trophies, the medals, the awards, the varsity letters or the high GPAs as the only proof of success. But let's learn to measure our success by the mountains, the hard work, the challenges, and the obstacles that we faced and overcame to get to wherever it is we are. Thank you. Cardigan Mountain School offers a close-knit community that prepares middle school boys in mind, body, and spirit for responsible and meaningful lives in a global society. To achieve our mission, we reward effort and accomplishment, helping each boy realize his, realize his academic, physical, and personal potential through the integration of the following core values, core values in all aspects of daily life. Compassion, be kind, seek to understand others, and go, out of, and go out of your way to help. As a community, we rely on the kindness and support of each other, another, in all areas of school life. We put the needs of others before our own and help the other fellow. Honesty, be truthful in words and actions. Even in difficult moments, we are honest with one another and ourselves. Our word of honor shapes our character. Respect. Respect, care for yourself, others, and Cardigan Mountain School. 
Living well together requires mutual respect and appreciation for ourselves, each other, our property, and our surroundings. Integrity, do the right thing. We are guided by a moral and ethical code and we align our words with actions. We do what we say we will do. Scholarship, embrace learning, curiosity, and growth. We appreciate and seek opportunities to learning all aspects of our cardigan experience. Understanding that learning is a lifelong pursuit filled with self-discovery, knowledge, habits, and skills. Fairness, act without favoritism or self-interest. We understand that everyone deserves to be treated well, free from prejudice or discrimination of any kind. Thank you everyone, thank you especially to Mr. McCusker, Mr. Good, to Austin for your thoughtful and poignant remarks and to our senior leaders for centering us on our common purpose as we embark on the year ahead. Finally, finally I'd like to thank Dr. Perryman and Mr. Harris for coordinating tonight's ceremony. There's no doubt in my mind, boys, that 2015-16 will be another banner year for us here on The Point. We have much to look forward to and much to invest ourselves in over these next nine months as we live, work, play, and grow together. But we would be foolish to assume that our success will come to us in the absence of deliberate and steadfast effort. And so I implore all of you to focus on what it will mean to start the year well together. What role will you play? How will you make your individual contribution to our collective goal of a strong beginning? In the year 380 BCE, the Greek philosopher Plato wrote in his book, The Republic, that the beginning is the most important part of the work. His timeless wisdom should ring true for us as it did in the academies of ancient Athens. For the beginning is our foundation, the groundwork that we will build upon to create something truly special together. So in these early days, Invest yourselves fully in the Cardigan way. Let the core values and habits of learning serve as your guides and compass as you begin this exciting journey. And you will be amazed by what we will accomplish together. At the conclusion of our ceremony tonight after the singing of the Cardigan hymn, we will dismiss silently out of the chapel and I would ask that you return to your dorms where we will begin our dorm meetings uh, before we sing the cardigan hymn, I want to give you all a compliment. Your attention and respect tonight has been terrific. I appreciate it. I know it's been a long couple days, and we really do appreciate the start that you've helped us get off to. Thank you. In a moment, we'll rise and sing the cardigan hymn. For some of us for the first time, for others of us for one of many times. Um, if this is a more familiar piece to you, this very important uh, song that's been a part of Cardigan tradition for many years, uh, please feel free to sing out and help those around you who may be singing it for the first time. And now please rise and join in the singing of the Cardigan hymn. Nature's gifts benign, we raise in song our thankfulness for beauty which is thine, for winter snow, for afterglow, when day fades into dreams of goals toward which we all will strive to keep thy faiths alive. To keep thy faith in us alive, together we will strive. <laughs> 